meteorologist Lewis Turner and uh, got a little time here, a little extra time I want to spend with you and uh, talking about Helene, of course, talk about Hurricane Helene. And we got our very latest numbers in from the eight o'clock advisory for you now. It is a category two hurricane. We've got uh, the cone tightening up now, landfall still uh, consistent with a Thursday night landfall layer along the Big Bend. Now we, we say Big Bend and that refers to a pretty big area, hence the name uh, essentially from uh, Steen Hatchie all the way over to Apalachicola and where that turn makes it to Mexico Beach. So we can get even more precise here and say somewhere within the Apalachee Bay, uh, closer to Apalachicola, uh, could see that landfall occur. This according to the National Hurricane Center guidance. Computer modeling would like to pull this a little bit further to the east, but Hurricane Center taking into account uh, interaction with land that happened late last night with Cancun, with Mexico, that's uh, maybe pulling it a little bit more towards the west. Something to watch very, very carefully. A category three, perhaps a category four hurricane at landfall. Either way, that's major status and that is devastating and that will be for the folks uh, in and around the Big Bend and up into even Tallahassee Leon County looking out towards the panhandle there. So I'm going to give it a couple of seconds, let more and more people get on here. I want you to be able to have an opportunity to, to kind of absorb the cone and what we're looking at as far as our forecast goes with the cone. And remember with our cone, we're only talking about the center of circulation. This is a massive storm. Okay, absolutely huge. So but when we're talking about a 30 to 40 mile center of circulation, right? Uh, that a circle basically that could make landfall anywhere within this cone of what they call the cone of uncertainty. That's all this cone does is show us where that center would be. But remember, impacts can be felt hundreds of miles, some 300 miles really outside of that center. And that's why it will have impacts along our first coast in southeast Georgia as well. And, and, and zooming into what I'm talking about, so Appalachee Bay, here uh, over towards Perry, Panama City, outside of that cone on the western side right now. And, and the western side of this, if, if you get over to uh, towards further down in the, in the panhandle and, and towards Alabama and, and Mississippi, Louisiana, the impacts are going to be a lot lower on that side. Uh, it, there's a cold front, a trough essentially of low pressure trying to just smash this thing and push a lot of the uh, uh, impacts more towards the east. So another reason again, they call it the dirty side of the storm and for and, and for that reason, we'll have the tornado threat here along our first coast. But just look how big this thing can be felt really just impacting the atmosphere. You can almost make out what I'm talking about when I say that front. So right here along that edge as the storm gets flattened out as it makes its way up towards the panhandle. Uh, the the difference between being on the west side and the east side is going to be stark. So if uh, landfall occurs and uh, towns on that western side out further towards the panhandle, the impacts won't be nearly as much. But here's our eye wall and you can see it has clearly formed on our satellite picture now. So when you get a clear view of the clouds breaking in the center where the red is, that's the tall cloud tops there, the cold cloud tops. But right that clear view there that that's an indicator of some strengthening that's going to happen to that category three level. So let's get our impacts going for Helene. I'm going to look bigger, broader picture. I'm going to go county by county for you. Worst impacts will be towards I-75. So uh, Columbia County, think our friends in Lake City, Jacksonville gusts and this when I say Jacksonville, I'm going to include the Metro, but I'm also going to include Southside. I'm going to include St. John's Flagler counties, Clay, Putnam and up into Nassau, Baker, Bradford County and uh, Camden Glen. Uh, Charlton counties as well. So Jacksonville, that's a lot, but uh, the, those counties specifically going to have gusts 40 to 60 miles an hour. Lake City, though, where the hurricane warning is uh, gusts up to 90 miles an hour. Rainfall, two to five local street flooding, certainly possible, but this won't be a rain event. This is going to be a wind event with a tornado threat, and many of those impacts going to happen tonight. So as we do go county by county, I'm zooming into that tornado uh, to the hurricane warned area in red. So anywhere in red, that's the hurricane warning, and essentially it's Columbia County, it's Lake City, and west to the Gulf of Mexico. That's where the worst is going to be from 6 p.m. to midnight. The impact going to be gust to 90, and that will create flying debris, and even adding insult to injury, some tornadoes are going to be possible there as well. Have that hurricane plan ready, and during those hours at 6 p.m. to midnight, be off the roads and be in a safe place. Where Charlton, Brantley, Pierce, we're going to inland southeast Georgia. Now, worse for you is going to be overnight. So this is when most folks will be sleeping, 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. Have 
a method, First Coast News app, uh, weather radio from the National Weather Service, make sure it's programmed and working appropriately, but have a way to get alerts sent to you because overnight is when we could have those gusts of 75 and some tornadoes there as well. Uh, Glen Camden, Nassau County, worst for you, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., same impact, 60 mile an hour gust, tornado threat, and Duval, St. John's, Clay, Putnam, and Flagler, including all of you kind of in this big loop here where you are in a tropical storm warning, and hence we could get those gusts of 60, so tropical storm force winds and isolated tornadoes as well. Uh, this Storm surge is not going to be a story for us. This isn't a water story for us. It is a water story for the Big Bend. 15 to 20 foot storm surge there, and that is why people on this side, especially on the coast, are having to evacuate. You run from the water. You hide from the wind, and they're going to be running from a lot of water there. And you can see the warnings and the watches, the warnings in this red area here, Lake City, and your uh, uh, hurricane warning, and then your tropical storm warning, I should say, in the orange area. I mentioned a moment ago the modeling, and here is a look, just kind of a bigger look at our cone with the Category 2 hurricane. Uh, and a lot of computer models and a lot of folks online looking at different models, and they continue to see uh, what these spaghetti model plots are showing us, a pull to the, the east, but this has been pretty consistent. So what the National Hurricane Center does and the meteorologists there, uh, they take that computer model data and then they make their own forecast. They take the data that their own, what their own eyes are showing them with radar, with satellite imagery, with what the hurricane hunters are finding. And they have still, you can see several of the models have pulled outside of the forecast cone. Hurricane Center saying that because of that interaction it had with Mexico, with Cancun, there's still a, a really strong feeling as per the tightness of this cone that it's going to actually stay a little bit further to uh, the west. So our GFS model, which has been pretty consistent with timing, really fast getting out of uh, the area by Friday. This uh, we've got dry air pushing in and actually a pretty nice afternoon as well. European model showing landfall a little bit later, uh, about 10 p.m. Thursday night. We're going to quick clear out by Friday. Again, those both of those models would be on the eastern edge of the National Hurricane Center forecast call. Now this computer model is just another piece of guidance. This is not gospel, but this is just one such model showing an interaction with the front. So here is our front pushing from one side, essentially an area of low pressure, a trough digging in uh, that is acting as, as a, a bit of a, a funnel almost helping to push and smash the storm, trying to get it come, to come to the east. The high pressure off over the Atlantic acting like another funnel, but also trying to smash it and push it back up to the west. And what's going to happen if you ever played football, you ever uh, uh, you messed with one of those jugs guns, the two wheels that shoot the football. Uh, this is exactly what's happening here. You got high pressure is acting as one wheel low, adding as another, and it is going to send this thing flying up through the panhandle, uh, bringing us the off and on chance of a thund uh, thunderstorm, but also a tornado. This is overnight though. Look, this is 1.30 in the morning when we could still see these bands coming on shore. And that's the greatest risk when we see the feeder bands coming off the ocean and onto land. You get the spin ups happening there. The storm uh, moving out really fast. Seeing the first of those winds really through the afternoon so that lunch hour getting to four or five o'clock. We could see in yellow the tropical storm force winds, the hurricane force winds staying well off to the west. Lake City certainly could get them, Tallahassee for sure, and then it moves up into Georgia. Atlanta could be getting category uh, one level hurricane force winds. Athens, Georgia, so that's way up in North Georgia by Friday. Uh, your enhanced uh, risk of some severe weather, and this is 10% chance of a point getting tornadoes within southeast Georgia and northeast Florida. So this uh, from the Storm Prediction Center showing a high risk there. And we've already seen the tornado watch box issued for the great part of Florida, probably going to be extended all the way into northeast Florida later on through our day. A couple of tornado warnings even for South Florida. Our winds gusting up to 80 miles an hour we're seeing here. Computer modeling Lake City 70 in AS Jack. So again, keeping that 50 to 60 mile an hour gusts if uh, we're out towards well, Highway 301 and east out towards Lake City even higher. So for our day today, the entirety of our day, a weather impact alert day. Notice the waves of rain, they'll come in bands. So not all day showers, but when those bands do hit, that's when we have our gustiest winds. That's when we'll have the chance of a tornado. And we'll wrap it up here uh, online right now and uh, over the air for our seven day forecast. I'll, I'll show you, we do wrap this up Friday morning. And we do make way as we can take a deep breath 
for a nice weekend, but we've got to get through the rest of our afternoon and overnight hours. That's when things are going to be the worst around our area. Y'all have a good day. We will continue to check in with you.